What's driving this trend away from beer and wine and into distilled spirits? Oh, definitely healthy consciousness. And the people, just like millennial generations, they don't drink a lot of alcohol products nowadays. And the beer and wine both have a lot of you know, sugar content. I think that's, that's the uh, huge trend. And plus uh, innovation. We produce a lot of innovative products in the industry, I mean, hard spirits, like a cocktail, cocktail uh, old style, new style. So authenticity and the new innovation, both are mixed. That attracts a lot of uh, consumers so, nowadays. So most of your business is actually in Japan, your home country, but you do have a growing business in America, mm -hmm. about 15%, I think, of revenues. What are you launching today, and who's your target audience? Um, we are going to launch uh, we call the East-West uh, Meat Project. The Japanese and uh, Kentucky both uh, uh, work together to uh, have the uh, uh, very interesting product, which is a legion targeting the millennial generation. It's a bourbon. Bourbon, yes. And we worked together, Japanese Santori experts, expertise and the Kentucky producing expertise, both together, um, melded together. Then we use the uh, both uh, you know, knowledge and the authenticity put together to make a, a very brand new brand. I remember a few years ago on a magazine cover, it talked about the bubble in bourbon that they argued we were in. That was years ago, and it continues now. Are you surprised that it's lasted this long, this rebirth of the of the of bourbon? It's not surprising because we've been increasing our our energy to innovate uh, liquids and the brand uh, building. So we've been uh, making every effort. So it's not surprising. Personally, I know that I have become, I've talked about it a lot, total whiskey fan, love a lot of your, your Japanese brands. How important is the female demographic in terms of the growth in, in your industry? Well, it's very important. Like we launched the Japanese style, the highball, uh, whiskey and uh, soda, uh, instead of drinking beer. And that attracts lots of women. And uh, it's not you know, too much alcohol. So innovative way to drink. We care about the last moment of consumption. And uh, especially currently, we see more women drinking because they like something new. So we, we want to bring more women to drink uh, hard spirits. But we need more innovation to continue the current momentum. I prefer something smoky. So <laughs> Get, bring us up to speed on the Japanese whiskey crisis. I mean, there's, there really is a supply shortage, I guess, made from previous decisions at companies like yours. How bad is it? It's pretty bad. Uh, my apologies. <laughs> uh, more than 15 years ago, we had the crisis because of the cheaper um, local uh, spirits uh, invaded our uh, turf, and uh, we, um, we didn't create a uh, uh, liquid. That means it's not sleeping. So we are now producing a lot. So please wait maybe six, seven years more. So that was our decision because of the huge competition. Where are you on cannabis? We've seen some global spirits manufacturers try to make some investments, some moves into the space or CBD. Is that the wave of the future for you? Well, it's a huge uh, risk and uh, yes, you're right. And we are studying very hard about uh, its uh, potential. However, that needs a regulation like you know alcohol. That should be dealt by the each state and the federal level as well. So you think the risk is regulatory right, such as, as opposed to the cons consumer uptake? Exactly, exactly. Though it, it has great potential, so we have to work on it. I mean, in terms of its potential. Right. But we need more science more about si the cannabis. And, and, and maybe Canada needs to be a test case for longer? Uh, yeah, probably, probably. But the medical use is fine. But uh, what to do with the, uh, you know, THC, which uh, get people stoned? It's really a um, problem in the future. So we got to be, you know, stay tuned about mm -hmm. uh, what will be happening. How much has your business been affected by the trade war and the tariffs back and forth from the U.S.? Oh, uh, exactly. I mean, uh, with the uh, Europe, uh, we might lose uh, 20, 30 million dollars if it discontinues. So uh, we can't take price because uh, scotch, uh, they are in a better position because, uh, you, know, you know, weaker pounds and they don't have to pay, you know, tariff. 
So we have to fight the Scotch people, I mean, Scotch players. So wondering how to do in terms of taking price in Europe or not. So we are not optimistic about the, the trade war between Europe and the, the U U.S. You mean the European? So the Europeans put on a lot of retaliatory tariffs after we put on the steel and aluminum tariffs. Exactly. How much does that hurt sales? Well, um, we don't want to lose our sales. That's why we are not taking price. So we want to keep our, our market share in Europe. Because but you're we just absorbing the extra cost. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. Exactly. You know, here in America, we still think of the movie Lost in Translation. Oh, thank you. For relaxing times, make it Suntory times. It's, do people come up to you on the street and say that? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, that, that is still, you know, a fantastic movie. And I'm so moved when people say that and that we have to work on it.